Welcome to the movie Speeching. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take good care. The Room is the name of the movie. Please like and subscribe to get every update. A couple can be seen sitting in a car, laughing, excited about arriving at their new home. When they arrived, Kate spoke to her mother on the phone and told her they had arrived. She kept asking her all kinds of questions, making her feel depressed. She hung up looking a little annoyed so Matt called her Junebug and told her that everything would be fine in their new house. Then we see them moving in and unpacking, happy and cheerful. Matt was repairing his workshop and spreading out a blank canvas ready to be painted when he heard a noise in the hallway. Kate started unpacking all the furniture the previous owner had left in a pile in the hallway. He walked out of his studio and told her he would do it, but she said that once he started drawing, he would forget everything else. Matt acted like a child so Kate had to apologize for hurting him. They continued to unpack. Kate went into the kitchen and opened the boxes with their glasses. She went into the closet and found a dead bird inside. Meanwhile, Matt unloads the old stuff and throws it out the window. Suddenly he found a key that seemed old. Kate was burying the bird outside when he threw a piece of furniture at it and scared her. A while later, Kate prepared her desk and Matt finally reached the wall behind the pile of stuff. There he found a door with a keyhole that seemed similar to an old key he found so he went outside and took it out of the trash. Matt unlocked the door and called Kate to join him. They opened the heavy gate and revealed an empty room inside. When Kate entered, the lights in the house began to flicker. Matt left to call the power company. As Kate walked out of the room, the flickering lights stopped. That evening, they drank in front of the fireplace. She joked with him that he was a city boy who didn't know how to take care of his new house. The next day, they were both in Matt's studio, and she told him that he just had to take the first step toward painting when the phone rang. He asked her about the house's plans. Kate receives a call from a client regarding a translation job, and she needs it done quickly. Meanwhile, Matt entered the room again. Suddenly, Kate shouted to him that the man from the electric company had arrived. Matt took the man down to the basement to look at their electrical installation. The man was shocked at what he saw there and said it was very old. He thought this might be the reason their power spiked, but he had never seen anything like it. The company man was about to leave when he gave Matt information about the house that he did not know, that the previous owners had been killed in the house. He also told him that he would send him a quote for the wiring as soon as possible. Matt immediately checked the information online. He discovers that the couple who previously lived there were brutally murdered in a house nicknamed the Blood House by the media. At the same time, Kate was working on her translation. Matt discovers that the police have a murder suspect, but his identity remains unknown. He covers the sleeping Kate in his office with a blanket, then draws a portrait of the alleged murderer while drunk. Matt went into the room and drank the entire bottle of whiskey, then said he needed another bottle. The lights flickered and one of them appeared in front of him. The night passed and the lights continued to flicker, waking Kate. She went into Matt's room and found it filled with surprising things. He showed her original paintings by Van Gogh and Cezanne. Kate thinks she's lost it, so to convince her, Matt tells Kate to name whatever she wants. She said she wanted a thousand dollars. The light flickered again and Matt searched the room for the money and gave it to her when he found it. She thought it was fake so he told her to ask for more than a million. Kate did so and the power went out for a moment and when it was turned back on, she saw the money clearly visible in the room. She was scared and said she had a bad feeling, but Matt convinced her not to take it seriously and just have fun. They started asking for things like champagne and more money. And after a while, Matt filled his studio wall with artistic masterpieces and she told him she quit. They were both happy with everything they wanted. At one point, Matt gives Kate diamonds. Then they went to bed and Kate was left wondering how the room worked. Matt says it doesn't matter, they should just use it. But Kate is skeptical about what might happen. Meanwhile, they keep asking for more things like spacesuits and having more fun with them, making their entire stay in the house a constant party. They kept asking and the room met all their wishes. Moments later, Kate sees the results of their wild nights and Matt wakes up in a messy and chaotic house. He found her outside on the swings and asked her where her necklace was. Kate replied that it was fiction and she could always get another one. The coin seemed to have reached him. Then Matt has something to show Kate. He took her to a room he had turned into a nursery. When she opened her eyes, Kate didn't look too happy. Matt told her they should try again since there was nothing physically wrong with either of them. She doesn't want to go through this again because she lost two children before they were born. Matt insisted but we couldn't convince her. He kicked her out and found her smoking. Then he went for a walk. While home alone, Kate returned to the nursery. 
The lights in the room flickered. Matt comes home and finds her in their room with the baby. He panicked, first thinking she had taken someone else's baby, then realizing she had claimed it in the bedroom. Kate told him there was no other way, and she took a shortcut. Matt told her they couldn't keep it and she needed to take it back to the room because it wasn't right. They both entered the room. Kate holds the baby but doesn't know what to say as the baby cries and Matt tells her to say she wants him to go. Kate couldn't do it so she gave the baby to Matt. As he looked at and held the baby, he realized that he couldn't do that either. He returned the baby to Kate and ran away. That night, the baby cried and Kate asked Matt to go into his room and ask for some milk. He understood, and when he returned, Kate was breastfeeding the baby. None of them understood how this could happen. The next day, when Matt hears Kate with the baby in the next room, he thinks of John Doe, who killed the previous owners, and looks him up online. The man was detained in a mental hospital. Matt took some money and left the house to find it. He went to the hospital and asked the nurse to talk to him, but she told him that the only visitors he had seen in 45 years were journalists. He lied that he was also a journalist so he could talk to her. John Doe is somehow able to immediately tell that he is not a journalist. Matt told him the truth without hesitation. The man invited him to sit at his table and told Matt that he had been waiting for him for a long time. He asked Matt if he liked the house and everything it had to offer, but Matt just wanted to know why he killed those people. The man said that was the only way they had to leave the house and forget about the room before it was too late. But he can see that won't happen because he thinks people like Matt are greedy and sleazy their whole lives. He supposed he was different from that, more so than Matt could have imagined. Later, Matt is at a gas station and is asked to pay the bill, but when he searches his pockets for money, he only finds dust. He rushed home and withdrew more money, then watched it turn to dust before before his eyes. Then he took the Van Gogh painting and placed it on the edge of the door. The paint on the outside of the house quickly degraded and turned into dust. Matt took the rest back to his studio. Meanwhile, Kate was changing the baby's diaper when she saw the light flashing again. She holds the baby and finds Matt in the room, tearing down the walls, trying to figure out how it works. The roles of the two people have changed. She admitted not knowing how it worked, happy with the baby. But Matt needs to know. He finds other strange cables behind the wall. He then tore down the walls and floors and found similar things as well as strange plaques. Kate wanted to take the baby out to get some fresh air, but he stopped her, asking her to trust him not to go out. She didn't understand what he meant, so she continued, while he waited for her at the door. Once outside, things started happening to the child and she panicked, calling Matt. The baby will age quickly when he grabs it and brings it inside. They both looked at the baby who had become a boy with worry and disbelief. Afterwards, Kate bathed him, then went into the office with Matt to ask him what was going on. Matt told him about John Doe. He then says that the room creates things like a giant 3D printer, as long as you never take these things out of the house. Kate was disappointed that he considered the baby an object, but he said it was a thing of flesh and blood. The kid joins them and Kate goes there, telling him everything is okay. Sometime later, Kate teaches Shane at home. She mentioned camping and explained to the boy what that meant, so he said he wanted to go camping. Kate tells Shane he's too tired for it, like he's too sick to open the door. She tells him that the house protects him, but Shane insists on going camping. The boy showed attitude towards her when he didn't get what he wanted, so he slammed the door in her face when she went to get something from outside the room. The next day, the boy looked longingly out the window and then went to have breakfast with his mother. A delivery arrives and he wants to pick it up, but Kate sits him down and she goes out to get it herself, locking the front door behind her. The delivery was intended for Matt, whom she dropped off at his studio door. He picked it up and opened it, revealing a gun. Matt is outside practicing his shot while the boy watches him through the window. Kate continues to spend time with the boy and plays the piano. Shane sneaked up behind her and tried to get to the door without Kate noticing, holding out his hand. When she recognized him, she brought him inside and checked to see if anything was going on. Kate then closes all the windows and when Matt asks her to stop, she tells him he can leave. Matt helps him put the house together, while Shane watches them do it from inside. That evening, Kate and Shane have dinner. Everything the boy did seemed to bore him. Matt wasn't any better. He drew furiously in his studio. Kate sleeps alone and Shane comes to her room to tell her he loves her and asks to sleep in her bed. The boy said he wanted to be with them forever and asked if they wanted that. Kate tells him yes. On one of the following days, Matt was seen shooting and improving his aim with a gun. Shane was in the studio playing with a snow globe when it slipped and broke when Matt walked in. He asked the boy what he was doing there, causing Shane to quickly run away. Kate enters the studio and Shane listens through the door as they argue. 
Matt says he can't go into his room, to which Kate replies he's still just a kid. But Matt just sees it as a product. That same night, Shane went through the house and found electrical wiring in the basement. He entered the room and the lights started flashing. Matt woke up the next morning to find an intact orb next to him. He sees things are not the same and immediately runs to Kate to ask her questions. They entered the room together and saw Shane making a snowman. The boy created a whole forest in his room. Kate thought what he did was amazing, but Matt didn't feel the same way. He pulled the boy out of the room and forbade him to enter. Matt locks the room while Kate comforts the boy because he doesn't understand why he's not allowed in there. Kate and Matt argue about the baby entering the room, while Matt thinks about everything Shane can imagine and manifest while he's in there. Suddenly the phone rings and Shane picks it up. John Doe was on the other end of the line, surprised to hear a young boy's voice. Matt picks up the phone and Kate tells Shane to stop picking up the phone. The boy told him who it was, while Matt talked to the man. He asked who asked for the boy. Kate heard their conversation from the other phone. Matt interviews John Doe about how they can stop the aging process outside the home. The man said that Matt could not accept the truth, but he always told him for the child to leave home, its creator would have to die. If Kate dies, then Shane will be allowed to live, love and grow old like anyone else outside the house. Matt realizes that John Doe is also fictional. The man told him that his mother killed his father, then forced him to kill her too so he could live. The question is, will Matt kill Kate to save Shane or kill his child to save his wife? Kate begins to cry and Matt realizes that she has been listening. She took the car and left. Shane spends his days alone playing games and watching cartoons. Matt repeatedly calls Kate's cell phone begging her to call him or come home. As time passes, Matt panics because Kate has disappeared, leaving the child to his own devices. She was in the car and thought about committing suicide to save the boy's life. Meanwhile, Shane finally enters the studio. Then he and Matt have dinner together and the kid asks him what fiction is because he heard him say it. Matt tells him to forget it and eat his food. The boy said that Matt was not his biological father and wanted to know where his real father was. Matt tells him that he doesn't have any real parents, neither of them. He even told him that he was not a real boy and what would happen to him if he ran away from home. Shane didn't believe it so he grabbed him and took him to the door, telling him to see for himself. Matt told him that he was not a real person but an idea, so the boy went back to his room. Realizing that he had treated the boy badly, Matt went to apologize to him. Shane asked him to read it to him. Kate comes home and finds them sleeping next to each other. Matt then joined her in the kitchen and started a conversation about what she had heard, but she didn't want to talk about it. They make love in the kitchen while the guy watches them. The next morning, the child stole the house key and left. Matt heard the door and got up to look for it. Kate also came down and they saw that he had left the house at some point. They entered the living room and found a teenager. Shane took a gun and shot them. He wanted to kill Matt. But Kate calmed him down just enough for Matt to push her aside and jump at him. The two fight over the gun as Kate passes out. She then wakes up to find Matt watching her. He told her that Shane was dead, that he had been shot while they were fighting over the gun. Kate asks to see the body and he tells her he took it out. She goes looking for him and Matt goes out to be with her while she grieves. Matt wakes up in the living room. He looked outside for Kate, then looked around the house and saw flashing lights. Matt searched for the keys to get in and when he couldn't find them, he started digging through the wall. At the same time, Kate and the other Matts are having lunch and she asks him what they will do with the house. She says she can't live in this house anymore, but the others, Matt tells her they have no money and no jobs. If they stay, the room will meet their needs. Kate is suspicious of his behavior, which reminds her of behaviors similar to Shane's. Matt crawled into the room through the electrical wiring on the wall. Finally, he passed by and went deeper into the forest. At the same time, Kate and the other Matts are sitting in the living room when he tries to touch her and says he saw them doing it. Kate pushed him away and almost understood. Then he said, hi, mom. Naturally, Kate panicked and ran out the door. Matt almost went home while Kate was in hiding, who she discovered was Shane. He attacked and raped her, but Matt arrived home and broke in. Shane searched the house looking for Matt and vice versa. When Kate left the room she was in and ran into one of them. At first she thinks she's found the real Matt, but a second person appears. They both tried to convince her that they were the real Matt when one of them called her Junebug, but the other repeated herself and grabbed her hand. She pushed him down the stairs and they ran towards the door. The room begins to flicker as Shane wakes up in his true form. Kate and Matt realize they are still in the room and try to get out, while Shane continues to change to annoy them. Matt has an idea of how they can get out of this. Shane caught up with them and ran towards Matt with a knife. He kills him, then tells Kate that everything is fine. Suddenly, the real Kate and Matt ran out the outside door. 
Shane saw them and opened the door. They ran through the woods and reached the door, opened it and ran to the front door of the house. Shane attacks Matt again and they fall out of the house. He wanted to turn back, but Kate grabbed him and locked the door in his face. Shane began to age and deteriorate, begging her to let him in until he became an old man and moved away. Kate ran after him and she and Matt followed as he collapsed and broke down completely. Shane turns to dust as Kate cries for him. A month later, Matt and Kate are at the hotel. He comes back to the room with coffee and she stays inside, panicked about the positive pregnancy test and won't let him in. The lights in the room flickered. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.